All right, um, welcome to SAS Bytes for the week. Uh, this week is going to be a, just a little bit different. Um, so I'm on a company retreat uh, with a little bot. Um, so we're not going to be doing it live, and uh, I don't really have a good way to do face and uh, screen. So we're just going to do a quick screen capture um, and walk you through uh, SAS Bytes for the week. So again, this is the SAS Bytes show. Uh, I am Micah Godbolt. Um, you can follow me. You can follow SAS Bytes there at SAS Bytes. Uh, you can also check out uh, all the, the previous episodes on uh, youtube.com slash sassbytes. I think this is episode 14. 14. So there's 13 more episodes you can catch up. Uh, as well as you can follow us on google.com slash plus sassbytes podcast. They wouldn't give me sassbytes, so I was kind of annoyed by that. But uh, oh well. Um, I'm hopping back on um, to uh, talking about Compass. Uh, we did a real quick introduction on Compass before we had a couple special guests on. So I want to jump back into that and um, talk about um, setting up a Compass project and some of the cool stuff that um, being able to customize and set up a Compass project is going to provide for you. Uh, and a lot of that primarily comes from uh, the config RB. And that's one of the first things you're going to run into that's just different than a standard SaaS project. You're like, what's this config RB about and, and how do I use it? So uh, that's what we're going to walk through and, um, and we're going to do it. So um, first thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and cancel my SaaS watch. All right, let's take a look at this, this config RB on the left hand side. You can see I've got a couple different folders here. This is my main project here we're going to be working with. Uh, and then I've got this other folder that's another, like a, another project or a framework I've been working on. Uh, and we're going to get to that actually really shortly. So uh, let me just go line by line through here on the config, R config RB and explain what each of these things does um, and how this one file in your project kind of gives you this this, uh, this preset of um, settings and, and abilities that um, allow you to define your project really well. Uh, so the first thing you typically do is um, you require all of your necessary um, uh, frameworks or plugins, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and so in this case, we're requiring two different plugins uh, or frameworks. Um, the first one is Suzy, uh, which is just one of the many um, grid frameworks out there uh, that's built on Compass. And the nice thing with this is Suzy is a gem that you download, um, but then requiring it, um, it, it's way over in your computer, down in folders and around and everything like that. Uh, we're just going to require it right here and it'll make it easy to use within our project. Um, the same thing goes with this add and import path. I had, ch I had a chance to use this on a project recently where we wanted to reuse some code from a different project. So rather than um, constantly writing these import statements that had, you know, back, 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 over, 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 you know, up and down through folders, we can actually explicitly state that this other folder, back one level, and then into my other project, is another folder that I want to be watching for watching for changes, uh, having files in there to include. And actually, the watching for changes is, some, is one of the really important ones. Um, so it, when I'm watching all my files, if I make changes to that other project, it'll also, uh, Compass will see that and will be able to actually compile uh, your SAS every time. So um, that's really nice in that you can watch it and uh, if you make changes in either one, things get updated. So we're going to take a look at that shortly. Um, this HTTP path uh, allows you to set a basically a, a value of where this folder, where this, um, uh, where this, all these SAS files, what's that root directory, what, how do you get to it? Uh, so in this case, um, just kind of to demo like what you do with a Drupal site, you might have sites slash all. Uh, slash themes and your theme. Uh, sometimes I think Drupal actually does this for you and other things might actually um, do a lot of this for you uh, depending on where things lay up. Um, but this, I just want to give you a quick example. Um, so you can just you can tell Compass where this file, where this folder is sitting within the hierarchy uh, of the deployed site. And uh, we'll get to how you can use or not use that in a second. Um, the CSS directory basically just says when you compile something, where do you want to go? Uh, is it right in the CSS or do you have like assets slash CSS, whatever you want. Uh, the SAS directory allows you just to set what is the folder that we're watching for SAS files. Similar to that add import path, but this is like the local ones, like what, what folder in here has those files. So that every time you want run a compass watch, it already knows where things go. Uh, this image directory is, is kind of nice and we'll talk about this real quick. Um, that you can, you can tell compass where that image directory is. Um, so that you can actually run functions um, 
that, and, and just not worry about where, let's see, uh, well, you can import images through a, a compass function and not worry about the actual path to that folder. Uh, I'll demo that here really shortly. Um, and the other nice thing is if you happen to move it, then you don't have to worry about updating all of, uh, all of your code uh, inside. So it just tells compass where the images are. Same thing with generated image directory. Um, compass is able to um, generate uh, image sprites and, and, and other things, especially sprites. And if you can tell Compass where to put those images, typically those sprites you don't want to be committing to the repository. You don't want every single time you, commit, you, know, like you create a new sprite, it goes in the repo over and over and over again. So this gives you an opportunity to put all those in a specific folder and then just ignore that folder with a, a git ignore if you want to. Um, JavaScript directory as well, just to say where that JavaScript directory is. Honestly, I can't, not really sure what Compass does with JavaScript, but uh, it might come in handy at some point. All right, jump down. Here are some more of the options you can set. Uh, we have output style. So expanded, nested, compact, compressed. Uh, what do you want the finished output CSS to look like? Do you want it to be um, expanded, which is what we have on the right-hand side here? Um, do you want to have it nested, which is a little more compressed, compact? Compressed is, is like, is like almost no white space. So compressed would be what you actually would want to serve up to your, your actual server and, and serve on the website. Expanded obviously is going to be a lot nicer um, for, um, for viewing yourself and, and debugging and looking at your code. So uh, as, you're, um, as you're working on things, you typically want to just keep it expanded. Um, again, Drupal automatically compresses all of, of SAS. So if, or I'm sorry, all of your CSS. So if you're working in an environment like that, it might not even matter. Um, because um, oftentimes within that build process already gets done. Uh, relative assets, um, kind of what I was mentioning, how you can, um, you can specify, uh, you can use a function to call an image and it'll automatically put the path in for you. It'll just allow you to choose, is that going to be a, a um, relative path or an absolute path? You can see right here, so sites, all, themes, my theme, and then the cat photo. Uh, so you can do a, a, an absolute path or a relative path. I'll show how that changes here shortly. Um, and you can also do, you do line comments, um, just a, a quick, you know, a true false right there to determine if line comments show up. Um, so I'm going to uh, jump in the SAS file real quick, and then we'll come back and change these and see what that, how the output file actually changes because of that. Um, so a couple things I've done here, obviously, um, in my uh, screen.scss, I need import compass if I want to use all the, any of the compass stuff. Uh, you don't have to import everything. You can do, like, you know, compass slash utilities or something like that if you just want it. But typically, I just port all of compass. Um, I'm importing Suzy so that I can use uh, the grid framework. But then you can also see I'm also importing my mixins. So my mixins is a folder within my project. Uh, and you can name it whatever you want, of course. Um, but what you can see is I, all I have to do is import my mixins. I don't have to worry about the path or where it is. If I move it, I can just update my config RB. Um, Anyway, it just it keeps things nice and simple. I can just import that project and then, uh, I'm sorry, require that project in my config RB uh, right here, uh, and then just import it or import any of the files I want to anytime as if it's a local project. Uh, so just like the Suzy, my mixins. So it's just it's another framework that I can use, uh, and that makes it just really nice and easy. All right, so um, we've got a couple things here. I'm just kind of um, gonna demo of how these how um, these settings are gonna change this output. So on my um, cat class, it has a background, and here's this um, uh, um, this function in Compass that allows me just to call image URL cat.jpg um, because I don't I don't have to tell it or I, I don't have to specify what folder this cat image is in because my configure B I've already said all the images are in slash image folder, so I can just call this function image dash URL and you can say cat, uh, or if it's inside of a folder, it can be you know. Uh, animals slash cat or something like that. Um, so the really nice thing is if I happen to like either in a build process, like locally all of my images are in one place, but uh, when it deploys it's somewhere else, uh, this allows you to, to change just that one variable and, and your outputted um, data can change. So it gives a lot of flexibility. Um, and then right here you can see I can use this include statement that is part of my mixin, uh, my mixin framework or my framework mixin. And it's just call in a couple of random values. But you can see now I can use that include statement, that mixin, um, uh, in my project. Uh, it's, so it's being pulled in from this external directory. 
Uh, the, the nice thing here is, is say that you, you're building your own grid framework or building your own um, sets of mixins and functions and those kind of things. You can, you can keep that in a project separate and then use that in all of your other projects without having to duplicate the code. So obviously green and 20 pixels isn't a big deal, but if you've done a bunch of code, uh, a lot of custom functionality, and you want to continue to use that and continue to refine it in all of your projects, this, that's what this allows you to do. Have your own little custom framework. Uh, you can get a lot, lot more detailed with it. I'm going to probably do an episode on that in a, uh, later on. Um, it brings out, it can bring even more functionality in if you want to, but this gives you the basics. And then you can see right here, the span columns of six is, is part of SUSE. It's how um, you can call a, uh, a column of six. Uh, 12 is a default column, so I'm going to have a six column out of 12. So you can see on the side here, I've got a width of almost 50% with a little bit of margin. It does all the floating and all that. So that's what happens once you brought that SUSE project in. Um, and that allows me just to use that without having to do anything else or specify where Suzy is and those kind of things. So that's one of the great things about Compass is that it makes it really easy to start using some of these external libraries uh, for your, your grids and for your breakpoints and for your buttons and for your typography and those types of things. So uh, really powerful. So um, real quick, I'm going to make some changes here. And let's just take a look at what happens when I change some of these things. Relative assets. Let's do uh, relative assets and line comments. Um, and then we'll do uh, compressed, just to take a quick look at this. Uh, I'm not going to change anything up here because uh, you really can't see too much. All right. Uh, now, one thing, anytime you make a change in the config RB, um, you're not going to see any changes until you restart Compass. So you have to, if you have a Compass watch going um, like this, you're going to want to stop it. You can see that Control C to stop. Skip that version. Control C to stop, and then you're just going to want to start a new one uh, so it can see those new settings and uh, work within those. So every time you run Compass Watch, it's going to check the config RB, and only when you start it. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and hit save on here. And should have a change. Hey, look at that. Good. Okay, I just took a second to kick in. <laughs> so you can see a couple things here. We've changed to, um, uh, do, 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 okay, we've changed to relative assets. So instead of having that full URL, it's just doing a relative path, relative from where that CSS file is. Because again, Compass knows where that CSS file is. So from the CSS file, you go up a directory, you go in images, there's your cat, uh, there's your cat photo. Um, this right here is, is a cache buster. This is just an extra string that goes on the end that's unique. It doesn't affect the actual asset or anything like that. It doesn't change the asset. Just every time Compass um, uh, generates, it's going to put a different number on there, which helps uh, bust, bust caches. So if you are accidentally caching images, uh, you can turn that off as well, but I just didn't want to mess with it at the moment. Um, and so you can see here with this compressed, everything is crammed together with as, as little white space as possible. Um, and, um, oh, you know, with line comments, with compressed, it looks like it doesn't show line comments. Oh, that's the other thing about compression, about compressed output format, um, is that um, is it takes out all comments. <laughs> Ironically, that's why it doesn't show up. Uh, so any uh, any standard comments, uh, CSS comments you put in there are going to get removed at that point whenever you do compressed. So let's do nested real quick. And as I mentioned, we're going to have to stop it and do it again. Do a couple swatch. And just give it a second. Hey, live demos. Sweet. All right. Um, with compressed, you see, really all they do is they, it pulls this up top. So you save a um, uh, you save a line, which is good when you have lots of them. Uh, so you can see this. Um, so we've got this background URL. Uh, the background URL again is uh, relative, and then we have the actual uh, comments just inline CSS comments that say for every single um, one of these selectors, what line of SAS that came from. So you can see this dot main actually came from line 10. So even on even though it's on line eight here, it came from line 10. It just makes it easier to find which file it came from. So it came from screen. So you have you know, hundreds of files, it's easier to find it. And also what line. Um, this is the current version in SAS 3.3 uh, and newer versions of Chrome. Um, we're actually starting to get into actual source maps 
uh, source maps, which is uh, like a JavaScript or JSON file. I've, I've, I need to dive into more into it more. Um, that actually tells the browser where the files are, so it does actual mapping, which is super cool. But if nothing else, this just allows you to be able to dive in your CSS file, look at it, say line 10 or the screen at CSS. All right, I found it, good to go. So again, config RB is it's it's the it's all the settings that your Compass project might need. So all you have to do is say Compass Watch, and it's going to know um, it, it knows what plugins or frameworks to use. It knows. All your, about all your like folder structure and where to find things so that it can find stuff and also use some of those cool compass functions like generating images and just finding the URL as well as setting your output styles, your assets, line comments and all those types of things. And of, of course you're going to you're going to commit this config RB into the repo. So um, so everyone that, that downloads this project, um, you know, will have all these settings automatically. So that when you're when you're actually doing your your so let's see, so instead of doing a SAS watch and then telling it that, like the different folders with all these different um, um, tags, all you have to do is compass watch, and it'll automatically know where everything is and it's able to do everything it needs. So anyway, uh, that's it. Again. Um, um, yeah, a little bit different this week just because of where we're at. Uh, but I certainly want to get something up because uh, I know this is Compass is a really great tool. And uh, I, with a couple of guests these last few weeks, I want to make sure to get something going. So I um, hope you enjoyed the show. Um, next week, we'll be, we'll be back to normal uh, diving, hopefully, into some more Compass uh, bits, bites, and uh, be in the normal format with video and also live broadcasted on, on Thursdays at noon. So. Uh, again, follow us at SassBytes on Twitter. Um, check out our old episodes, uh, youtube.com slash SassBytes, uh, or follow us on Google Plus as well. Um, all the stuff, um, they're all on our Hangout, so you'll see things. Uh, you'll see it all there as well. So uh, again, the, uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to find this button to say uh, see you next week.